Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's a completely different topic, but um, you'll recognize quite soon that, of course, the car carrier industry is um, also not decoupled from the rest of the shipping industry. What is the car carrier market? For those of you who are not so familiar with it, it is a niche market, certainly. There is only about 706, uh, 760 ships, car carriers, carrying our cars around in this world. It is uh, dominated by the top seven companies who are in control of 65% of the entire market. Ships transport between 2,000 and 8,500 cars, or to be precise, car equivalent units, CEO, CEUs. The main trading Europe, as you can imagine, is Europe outbound and Asia outbound. And like in other shi shipping segments, we have operators who transport their own cargo and we have tonnage providers. The typical time charter duration in the car carrier segment is between three and 10 years. George or Georg Wist, ladies and gentlemen, is the CEO of Gram Car Carriers, which are the world's third largest tonnage provider in the car carrier industry. Graham have a history of about or over 40 years now and um, they became public or went public uh, end of January this year, the Oslo Stock Exchange. Before joining Graham, Georg was CFO in Hafnia Tankers in Copenhagen following 80 years with Nordea Bank as senior vice president and head of uh, Europe, Asia and Middle East actually partly from Singapore. Georg, how does it feel to be back? Oh, thank you, Stefan. No, it's always great to be back in Singapore. Um, I was here in the, in the last heydays from 2007, and then something happened in 2008, so we came to a crash. Um, I went here with my family, so Singapore is very much second home to me. I always enjoy uh, the famous words when you land at Singapore airport, Changi, where they said, welcome to Singapore or residents for Singapore, welcome home. So uh, it's always a special, special moment. So it's, it's great to be back. It's been a long wait. We, we've all been bored for COVID. So I think we're all energetic and keen. And that's why there's a good turnout today. And uh, yeah, we're all enjoying speaking to each other, congratulating each other. And uh, we'll probably have a drink also afterwards today. Great. That's a good announcement. You drive, do you drive a car, combustor or electric? No, electric, of course, like a proper Norwegian. We, we only use electric cars, uh, of course. Well, congratulations for that. Okay, I'm probably the only one in the audience here who doesn't have, I don't own a car, right? So probably I'm the wrong one to do this interview here with, with this gentleman on car carriers. But who in the audience drives an electric car? Hands up. Well, it's very little, right? It's f four or five people. And all the others, nice combustors, like sound and so I can understand that. Good. Um, that's interesting. So, do you know where your car was built actually? Where did it come from before you bought it? Yes, uh, it was built in Germany, but uh, not all German cars, or what perceived to ge are German cars, are necessarily built there. But I actually know that the car I drive was actually built in, okay. in Germany. Good. Let's talk about the market first, the car carrier market. The war in Ukraine, COVID-19, uh, inflation, uh, um, and maybe lower uh, cargo volumes in, in many other shipping segments are probably some of the factors which at least um, influence the shipping market in general. How about the car carrier industry? How is this doing? And is this influenced by all this? No, I, I mean, we're all influenced by it, of course. And uh, it's, it's obviously, you know, there are dark moments and sad stories out there right now. I mean, on our ships, we have uh, predominantly Ukrainian seafarers, so it's been uh, some special times, you know, taking extra care of their families, making sure they're all safe. Um, we had one ship when the war broke out that was on its way to Russia, so we had to turn that around and could not go to Russia uh, with Ukrainian seafarers, obviously. So, but, but apart from that, I mean, we are, we are really in party mode, I would say. We are at historic high rates, uh, earning 50% more than the last peak, so, so from that perspective, it's, um, it's, it's great times. It's one that we waited for for some long time. I mean, we've had seven, eight terrible years. 
uh, been sweating and um, restructuring and pushing and negotiating with lenders and uh, yeah, so it's, it was a long, we saw it was coming, uh, it was actually on its way back, then we got COVID, which actually meant to scrapping of about 25 ships, so now there's been negative fleet growth in our sector for eight years, and I think a traditional shipping story, what happens when you, when you have negative fleet growth for a long time, then eventually it pops and you, you, you enjoy tremendous rates, so this is where we are at the moment. And uh, what other reasons do you think? Is just a shortage in tonnage? Or is this also due to the, say, is there an increase also in cargo capacity, maybe also due to the replacement of, of um, combustor-driven cars by, by electric cars? Yes, it's really a couple of things coming together. It's obviously a very balanced fleet, but then you have China, who last year surpassed Korea as the world's second largest exporter of cars, up to two million. Last month they exported 330,000 cars, so now they have a run rate of more than 3 million. They have ambitions of going to 5 million. So all of this obviously is, uh, needs transport and it's long haul, it's to European markets, it's to American markets and into Asia. This is one. Another one is uh, the, um, the investment that is now going on into the mining industry. There's been an underinvestment there for a long time. So a lot of mining equipment, we see all the miners having good results. So all of that mining equipment they're buying also gets carried on car carriers. And then there's food safety. I mean, the war in Ukraine may probably prove that more than anything. We need to have food safety in the world. So there's also more investment into agriculture machinery and all of that gets carried on car carriers as well. So it's kind of many things coming together, um, which is then giving this uh, current uh, real upcycle. So that means you're not only transporting cars, but also other kind of equipment actually, right? Yeah, trains, uh, buses, uh, excavators, uh, har harvesters, uh, also some wind windmill turbines, etc., etc. Yeah, understood. Okay, you are um, owning 18 ships and you are managing altogether a fleet of 22 car carriers yeah. with a relatively small team in Oslo, uh, about 15 people, you told me. I think you should explain a little bit more about your business model and how you, how you do that. Now, so, so basically we, are, we have a lean, lean model and we are a tonnage provider. So we, we charter our ships out to the operators who in turn have cargo COAs with the, um, with the uh, car manufacturers. So, so we, we don't book you know, each journey, we just go out on time charters. So that means we can have, have fewer people there. We also have a team of four excellent employees who manage the technical side and we rely then on, on on uh, third-party technical management uh, for the crewing and, and some of the more basic operations. We do our own dockings, our own in the yard supervision, etc. But, but for the day-to-day, -day, we rely on strategic partners which are doing our, our uh, management uh, on board. Oh, it's interesting. And that was a stock price which this year has beaten all records, uh, at least in, in the Oslo Stock Exchange. I understand we are a little bit ahead of, 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 of what I wanted to discuss with you, but with a very relatively small team. Uh, I don't know whether you are, you are best in class this year in Oslo, but uh, at least you are close to that, right? What has the stock price done over the last couple of, of months or year to date? Yeah, so since the IPO in January, we have uh, tripled our share price. So it's been a fantastic journey, and driven obviously about uh, very good contracts we have been able to secure and announce to the market. So. So we are we're tied with Hafnia for the top place. It goes so one day we are, one day they are. So some healthy competition with my former uh, colleagues. Good, and you have, I understand, uh, uh, two major shareholders uh, who are German or at least have a German background. Uh, since some of them are in the audience, um, no details, but do they behave in, in principle? Well, since they're the audience, I have to say yes, right? <laughs> okay. No, no, but they do, they do, they do. I think we have, a, we have excellent shareholders and and uh, they have been very supportive, and I think also it's always, e it's always uh, more joy when, uh, when you triple your share price. Usually then you get pretty happy investors. And we pay them dividends, right? We send them checks every quarter. We pay 50% you know, of what we make, we, we send back to the shareholders. And we'll continue to do that next quarter and the following quarter and so forth. So, so all investors in our company are very happy. They get their quarterly checks and, uh, and they keep on increasing. That's a clear buy recommendation from Mr. Wist at this moment in time to buy his stock. Market sources say we need about 100 to 200 new car carriers in the years to come. 
Um, I assume you plan to, to be part of this new building uh, program. Or have you ordered or do you plan to order? Yeah, so, uh, well, uh, um, Gram Car Carriage, the listed company, uh, is all about dividends, is all about vessels on water and securing those contracts. Uh, so w the way we have done it is that we have established a sister company called uh, Global Auto Carriers, which have uh, ordered four plus two plus two new buildings. And then as we secure contracts and assets move forward, we might or we might not put them together. But, uh, but it's important for our existing shareholders in Gram Car Carriers that we don't sort of waste their dividends on new buildings. So we have to segregate that. And we, have, we put it all together. So we took a 1% uh, finder's fee. So we have a 1% stake. And I have a 7.5% warrant. So we participate in the, in the upside also on the new buildings. Very good. Uh, car carriers actually are basically a floating park garage. Mm. Um, how can I imagine that? What are the technical or the, the main technical um, issues when transporting cars, maybe especially electric one these days. Is, is that a high sophisticated transport business or is that more what we, what we usually see that you just throw everything in and then transport it from A to B? Yeah, we discussed this before in New York, I think. So, uh, no, no, I mean, that's basically where we come from. We have a 40 year history. We have customers which rely on us delivering really on their behalf to the car manufacturers and it's you know, the car needs to look great, no scratch it, it needs to smell good, it cannot smell like all seagulls. It's, you know, it, it, so, it, so it, it's a little bit more complicated than regular bulk and tanker business. It's not uh, rocket science or moon landings by any standard, but uh, there is more, uh, there's a slightly higher barrier to entry. A higher barrier to entry does not ex exist in shipping, as we all know, but it's slightly higher for car carriers. And we've, we've just discussed on the panel about uh, that maybe the customers need to, to bear the costs of also decarbonization. Um, two things, how much, first of all, does it cost to transport a car from, you take the route, Asia to Europe or Europe to the US or US to Europe, how much does it cost to transport a regular car? No, it's quite marginal. Um, you know, the average car costs about $50,000. Uh, the cost of transport, you know, on the trough was about $500 per car. Now it's uh, around, you know, closer to $1,000 per car to transport it. So it's very little compared to the value, uh, value of the cargo. But it, but, but it is important and we really feel the pressure uh, on the environment front because obviously, um, as some of you will have seen, you know, Volkswagen, for instance, they promise their customers that they, you buy a carbon neutral uh, car once you go to the dealership. So we have to report all the all the carbon measures and it's just constant scrutiny. And I think the reason is uh, we're transporting a very identifiable product. It's a car, it's a car. It's a, you know, you can, you can measure it all the way from production all the way to the, to the uh, consumer. If you compare that to other, other shipping segments, you know, when you're transporting iron ore or, or crude oil, that is not traceable in the same manner as, as a car. So, so that's why you also see the lion's share all but one order is for uh, LNG dual fuel. People are thinking decarbonization, what is the next? There's a lot of am ammonia notations, people are on battery packs, uh, shore power, etc. So it's, it's, it's very much in the forefront when it comes to shipping segment uh, to have a very sort of green focus, homogeneous order with, the, with the dual fuel um, order book at the moment. Mm, I see. The, um the container shipping industry also tried several times to transport cars. And you even see now containers being, being put on, on multi-purpose vessels because the rates were so good. Is that a competition for you? Cars being shipped in containers? Or is there any competition for your business model from other segments? I mean, when the container market was really, really poor, uh, which is clearly isn't now, but when you're considering layup, then obviously, you know, to, to put anything in containers, we saw, you know, bagged goods and all kinds of things going into containers at that time. So you, the, it's not price efficient to use containers. And also, it's, it, it's too much damage to take uh, cars in and out of the, uh, uh, of the box itself. And then it is a logistic chain. So all the car manufacturers, uh, have big parking lots outside of their production facilities and they drive them straight onto the, onto the car carrier. So the whole logistics system is not built up around the containers and that's probably why all these reasons is why the most efficient way to transport is on, on a car, on a specially built car carrier. Uh, I see that. Um, 
Well, let's um, maybe conclude before uh, we'll be happy to open it uh, for, for two or three minutes uh, to the panel if there are questions. Although the shareholders in the room are excluded to, to ask questions here to the, uh, to, to the gentleman. Um, let's, let's, let's conclude. You already briefly talked about, we, I, I, you know, everybody's talking about the E and ESG, but I would like to talk about E and S and G. Um, so you say you're getting kind of pressure from the market, from your, um, these are normally not your charter, well, these are your charters who get it from the, from the um, manufacturers of the ships, actually. Um, and, and is there, in the, in the industry in general, is this transition going on that, that ships are, are now propelled by, 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 by also green fuels? Or what do you see, is the car carrier industry following it? Are maybe they running, running front, or what is, where, where's the industry standing on, on that bit? No, so as I said, the whole order book now is, 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 is focusing on dual fuel and next generation fuels. I mean, our company, we, we have been running on, on uh, sustainable biofuels. Uh, we're also looking into carbon capture uh, um, and talking to some of the people here tonight today, uh, among others. Uh, we all, so, so we try to be in the forefront uh, because, as I said, it's very identifiable on the car. You know, the consumer wants to know what is the carbon footprint of the product I'm buying. So, so obviously we are getting pushed a lot to, um, to come up with improved solutions. And for us as a tonnage provider, it's quite important to differentiate ourselves from the competition. So we always want to be in the front, trying to optimize and have those best solutions so that our ships get chosen before others. Okay. The, the S you also briefly mentioned on uh, regarding the, uh, the seafarers. Uh, which, of course, yeah, operating or yeah, managing a, a fleet of, of 22 carriers. What is the, actually, what is the crew? How many crew do you have on board of a car carrier? Is it about 18 people, so, uh, but we always have cadets, so we have a very stable um, uh, crew on our very high retention rate, and we've always spent uh, money on, on the cadets so that we, so we have master today who started with on our ships as cadets and we're following all the ranks all the way through. Uh, we have a mix of male and female um, uh, seafarers, although I, I would dare say that, the, the, of course, there's, or not of course, but there is an overweight of men. But we do see on board the ships where there is mixed uh, genders, that the, the atmosphere on board is much better. It's much more of a balanced uh, atmosphere. So, uh, so we keep on pushing for that. Very good. And the G in ESG, the governance perspective or...? or reference? What, what are you feeling there? What are you doing there? No, as a stock listed company, then of course you need to follow the best practice when it comes to governance. Otherwise, you're not going to get the professional investors. They are scrutinizing this more and more. So, so we put, you know, we pride ourselves to, to you know, be best in class there uh, and, and follow all the guidelines and the, and the requirements set by the industry and, and the uh, investor community. Okay. I just wonder whether there is, uh, maybe there's time for one question, if there is one. Is there a question, please, from the floor? Maybe I could ask a question. You know, I mean, uh, you said that for several years prior to a couple of years ago, uh, the market was mediocre. But now you're in a great place. And for the last couple of years, you've been in a great place. How much of that is management and how much of that is market? <laughs> uh, well, of course, it's a combination. But, you know, the, the, you cannot... We cannot take all the glory uh, ourselves, but you do make some strategic important decisions, you know, uh, uh, when you work through a, a challenging market. So, so I, I think it's a mix, but we're, not, but, uh, we're definitely not going to take all the glory for and pretend that we are, uh, you know, uh, rocket science and smarter than everybody else. But you do make some important uh, decisions. And I think we, we made one important decision, which we are very happy with when we, when in COVID we had to lay up ship, we chose to do it locally in, in Norway, in Norwegian fjords, and we decided to keep them warm, which meant that as soon as the market then turned, we could immediately go out and trade. Also, our competition had uh, went for cold stacking, and it took them almost a year to get the ships out. So you make some strategic decisions, um, and then you, you harvest from them uh, afterwards. Hooking in that question, are you going long now with your time charters as long as you can, or are you expecting well, we, we, this to still rise? 
No, no, so we are serving our customers, and the customers right now are demanding and wanting longer charters. We also like longer charters, gives us greater visibility. But, you know, they are now uh, also concerned that they can't get hold of tonnage. So they don't want to go short because then it's a constant battle for them to, to get ships. So, so there's a good symbiosis there. Uh, we charter out longer term at these healthy rates we're seeing at the moment. Yes, very good. So actually, Georg, for a Norwegian, you are quite talkative, I must say, <laughs> impressively. And, uh, excuse me, that was a cheap joke, but I need to make it here. So, um, so now let's see how spontaneous you are, right? Um, please complete the uh, following half sentences. When I come to my office in the morning, the first thing I do is... Talk to my staff and have a cup of coffee. Excellent. The biggest challenge in the life of a car carrier owner these days is... Uh, making sure the ships are running smoothly. And the biggest fun in the life of a car carrier owner these days is... Attend events with you. <laughs> That's so nice. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>